Just got back from a two week vacation in Ocean City, Maryland. And I wanted to share with you the gear that I brought with me and why I brought it. But first, run away to the gym. Sometimes I struggle with what to bring with me. And let's be honest, the more gear you have, the more complicated that's actually gonna be. One hour later. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my All right, so let me show you what we took with us. Like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. All right, all done at the gym. So for starters, all my gear went into my Torval FPV bag, but I didn't bring that my FPV quads and I'll tell you why more later in this video. And all the hardware I reference will be in the links below. If you're interested in any of the gear, if you wanna support the channel, please use those links. It doesn't cost you any more to use them. So I've got my Canon Rebel SL2 with a Shure VP83 condenser mic and dead cat. This is a relatively cheap setup for vlogging. The sound quality is really good with this Shure mic and I don't worry much about damaging or breaking this camera because it's not my most expensive gear. This means I'm more likely to use it in a more, let's say, unfriendly environment like the beach or out on the ocean while we were deep sea fishing or vlogging while riding my one wheel. So if you're at the beach as much as I am, then you'll definitely want to use a dead cat or a wind muff for your external mic. And I learned this very early on with my YouTube channel. If I'm not mistaken, the SL2 came out in 2017, so you could probably find it used for under $400. I also brought my Sony a7 III with a Sony 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. This camera shoots both great video and great photos. I use it a ton for photos, but it takes amazing video as well. The time-lapse intro that I did was using my Sony a7 III, which is why you didn't see it in the intro itself. And I also carry with me a variable ND filter for this camera as well. If you haven't tried variable ND filters, they're a great time saver because you don't have to keep swapping them out. Like, you would with a regular ND filter when the light, the light keeps changing. Now, for my needs, the Sony a7 III is a great camera without upgrading to obviously the newer a7S III, which we know is an excellent camera as well. Now, I also brought both my GoPros, the Hero 7 Black and the GoPro Hero 9 Black. These are just all around great action cameras. I use both of these to capture a lot of the footage on the charter boat we had. And because it's waterproof, I was able to capture shots of the yellowfin tuna as well. I've also got an assortment of ND filters for both of these GoPros. Then of course, I've got my small tree selfie stick. Again, links below. And this is a great selfie stick. If you're looking for a good selfie stick, I can strongly recommend this one. Now, I've had it for a while and it's just a great accessory to use with either a GoPro or an iPhone. And I took a lot of the charter boat videos uh, and one wheel riding shots using my GoPro and this particular selfie stick. Of course, I also brought my Joby Gorilla Pod. You just never know when this is gonna come in handy. Though to be honest, I don't think I actually used it on this particular trip. I also brought my Dell laptop, fits well into this particular bag, so I could do some photo editing on vacation as well. I'm still using the Dell XPX 15 inch as my main workhorse PC or laptop. I believe I brought this, bought this laptop in January of 2020, so it's still relatively new and handles Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects very well, which is my main editing software. And I should also mention that there were plenty of times that I shot photos and video on my iPhone. Never underestimate the value of your iPhone, especially for YouTube videos, Instagram, or let's say you're on TikTok. I also find that using my iPhone makes a great low profile camera that doesn't get the kind of attention a full-size DSLR camera on a Joby Gorilla Pod is gonna get you, which can be nice at times as well. Sometimes you just don't wanna get noticed. And I've got my FAA Part 107 certifications and recertification certificate in this bag as well. 
and a few other cables and accessories like a uh, Lassie external hard drive. Now, as you probably know, a good rule of thumb is always offload all your footage to an external drive as soon as you can, especially if you're flying drones or FPVs. Uh, the last thing that you wanna do is lose your footage or run out of storage space on your micro SD cards. And finally, I did bring my Mavic Air. This is the DJI original Mavic Air. Yep, I still got the original, not the Mavic Air 2. The original is still my go-to travel drone for shooting travel videos. Though, if I didn't already own the Mavic Air, I would probably buy the Mavic Air 2 and use that as my primary travel, do uh, travel drone. I just like the smaller footprint of the Mavic Air and the Mavic Air 2. Now, in full disclosure, because my wife also does photography, I have the added benefit of her shooting photos for me as well. She's using a Canon EOS R6, which is also an excellent camera for photography. I've heard some uh, complaints about the R6 for video, so I would do a little research before buying that camera if you're interested in a lot of video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell if you're enjoying this video. It really does, does go a long way to helping the channel. Okay, so back to the earlier question, why I didn't bring my FPV quads on this particular trip. Well, I didn't feel like there was really anything of interest in Ocean City, Maryland, specifically for the FPV quads to capture uh, anything better than the gear that I was already bringing. Now, if we had scenic cliffs along the ocean, then definitely an FPV quad would have been in my travel bag for sure. Rocky shorelines always make for some great FPV footage, but because of the type of footage that I was shooting, it just didn't seem practical to drag all my FPV gear with me on this particular trip. So the beaches in Ocean City are very flat and not much in the way of scenery for an FPV quad. So in summary, I would say pack your gear according to the environment you'll be in and what you plan to capture. Hopefully my next trip will have something to warrant bringing my FPV quads with me. And that's it for this video. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, bring that bell for future video notifications. And until next time, be safe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Do not okay, so I job. just had the wife review my video after hours of editing, and this is her initial, give me your initial feedback, sweetie. What do you think? You talk way too slow. You need to ad lib and not like, you need to like talk a little faster. You're like the professor from Ridgemont High. Bueller? You is know why she Bueller? looks like this? Because she doesn't want to be on camera. And she's going away to Mexico without her husband. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about you that, You better guys. not put this in video. <laughs> you better not. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law.